Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Oh, I don't know where to start this one. You've all seen Beryl. You've seen the build on Beryl. Let me put my brood out. And we thought she was finished. Like every Land Rover, she isn't. Um, we started having a look at the width of the fridge that we've got. Our fridge that's now back in the other truck in Heimdall is like 410 mil wide. Well, I've just bought a new fridge that's only 345 mil wide. It might actually be a little bit narrower than that. Which means that we get to cut off that much off the cabinets and make the bed wider. So that means we're ripping the interior out and starting again. So I say starting again. It's not quite completely started again. We don't need to rebuild this side. Uh, these cabinets that we put in with the under lockers are all staying. The bit that's behind me, which is like behind the bulkhead, the, the L-shaped piece of the seats, that's staying. So it's all this cabinet is getting ripped out, new one made that, like I say, is going to be that much shorter. Um, what else are we putting in? We're putting a fold down table, well, a Max Trax table on their passenger side. So, well, we've got this side out, we can get to the reinforcing bars and all the aluminium, you know, the reinforcing pieces on the skin. We're going to put that on because we've got to take the whole side out. And we're putting a storage box on the driver's side at the back. Basically, that's going to hold like stuff for the shower, the cooker, all those bits, because all the bits that we need access to all of the time, uh, you know, every day, the cooker, the water supply, is all going on an external cabinet, which we're going to make from scratch. So we're going to uh, bend and fold and TIG weld up uh, a new locker to go on that side, and it'll be right next to the shower tent. So like the toilet, all those bits that you do need all of the time are going to be accessible so you don't have to get under the seats to get the stuff. Makes life easier and if it's easy you'll use it. So uh, our first job, oh we're putting a hot water system in as well. So uh, that's coming from LVB, uh, that's going to be the, uh, the Glind hot water system that's going in. So we've got a few changes but first off, we're going to rip these out because hopefully the new fridge will be here today. So, OK, let me just show you what we've got to do um, to get to all of this. So obviously the cushions have all got to come out. They've got to be stored. The lockers up there, they actually just unscrew. And the when I made this, I made it so we could take the panels out if we ever needed to get to anything. So I've just got to unscrew those cabinets take the fire extinguisher off uh, there's some lights up in that dark corner up there where we've got to come out and we just take all those out in that panel along clip the front of the bridge which's on the roof up here has got to come off um, the shelf up there the blind that panel then unclips and comes out but I've got to get like an idiot I actually uh, all this stainless steel the stainless steel top we put in uh, is actually siliconed in so I think I'm probably going to destroy that getting it out uh, I know I'm pretty much going to destroy this cabinet the cabinet's glued and screwed so we're pretty much going to destroy that um, yeah so it's just a case of ripping everything out so uh, yeah let's make a start of emptying this We're making progress. I've got the shelf out from above. I know it's a bit dark in here guys, but uh, we are in the workshop, so. But yeah, we've got the main shelf out, what goes above there. And that was quite easy. Oh, there we go, it's brightened up. Uh, that was quite easy, because we put that in uh, on riv nuts. So it's actually just screwed into, uh, they're M6 riv nuts in the frame. So we've got to pull the electrical panels out to take that side panel off. I've taken out the piece where the fridge goes, I've just kicked the drill over and we're just about to take the, the main cabinet out. 
which looks like it's going to be quite easy because I might have made it the right way so we could remove it. But you never know. Wish us luck. I silicon this checker, uh, this stainless in, and the only way to get it out is to destroy it. Never underestimate. The strength of silicon. Never underestimate silicon. Unless you actually want it to stick something to something, then it's going to fall off. I think we'll be ordering new stainless. <laughs> Don't think I can read. Where am I? Might have polished copper. That'd be nice. Listen, when yeah, we like go. That colour, that, that, the mirror. Well, when we go and get the. Uh, the mirror. Uh, what's it? Get the aluminium for the other bits. They actually sell copper. They sell copper sheets. Oh, okay. Polished copper. That, that yeah. That, nice. No, that's bronze, but. Oh, not bronze. Yeah. I'm trying not to slice my hands on the edge of the... Yeah, I know, it's very sharp. Do you want some gloves? If I put it back down, well, you, you can't tell. Oh. I'm trying to work out what I'm breaking. Nothing. Me. <laughs> you. Me breaking me. Oh, is it you? Was your hand in the way? No, no, no. Yeah, just, take that out. Just oh, there was a screw. There was oh. one we didn't see. Right, take that out because we can probably save that. We can we can fix the top anyway. In the scrap pile in the trailer. It's heavy that is. It is. Stainless. It's heavier than we needed.
Right, I know that was a pretty crappy camera angle, guys. The uh, with it being backlit, it'll have gone really dark. But you get the gist of the idea of everything coming out. So the last bit is to get this piece of stainless off, and uh, actually I can reattach this. There's, uh, oh, I can't. It's still fastened to the cabinet. <laughs> I'm talking crap. There's, um, but I'll get that off and sort it in a minute. But yeah, uh, I'm going to fight with this for another half an hour. Uh, me and Karen have got really carried away with this and gutted out the entire interior on that side. <laughs> now, it all came apart quite quickly once we got into it. And we've made some changes uh, to the plans, but uh, yeah, everything's going to work. So let me show you on the outside what we're going to do on this first side that we've stripped. Before I forget, um, while we've got this side exposed um, like it is down to the original skin, we're going to put some more insulation in as well. We're, we've got another roll of um, self-adhesive insulation that we're going to put over the top of this foil backed because the foil back reflects the heat um, and this other one we've got is a sound deadening and thermal one so that's going to go over the top of this so uh, once we've put everything on we're just going to do that but let me show you what we're doing outside so the first part of this job will be to put a bracket here and a bracket here on the outside to build a max track table so we're going to have a fold down table on the outside so we'll be able to uh, basically fill it full of beer but uh, yeah so the max tracks table will double up obviously for holding the max tracks and a table but will save us having to carry another table on the inside of the truck so everything's got to have two purposes so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to go and fetch some aluminium now right me and Karen have been and picked up the aluminium um, quite a shock with the price of it Actually, it was a good shock. It was actually quite cheap compared to what it has been. But I was really upset when they told me at the aluminium place that now they get all their aluminium from China because they had to unpack me a, a sheet of checker plate. So, oh, yeah, it all comes on a boat from China now. That's because we can't manufacture anything in this country. Great, isn't it? So, uh, here's my Chinese aluminium. Now, these are going to be my uprights for my table. Uh, they're going to go here. Obviously it's not going to be that big, I'm going to cut this one in half, but uh, yeah, so if you don't, it's kind of awkward to show you, but it's, it's going to fold out like that and have the table mounted on the back. So that's going to be my table on the side, so it's going to be all the way down here. It's the, the table will be, the top of the table will be in line with the bottom of the window and then all my locking catches will be at the top where they're exposed, but yeah, that's it. That's the piece I've been looking for, uh, and off the top of my head I can't remember what the dimensions are for that. It's uh, two inch by something, it's weird they do it in imperial sizes. And I went and got a sheet of checker plate which is just around the other side. So yeah, I've got uh, an 8 before sheet of ply. Ply? I can't have said that when I was there. Checker plate. 8 before sheet of checker plate. So that's two point, I think it's 2.2 .2 or 2.5 by 1.25, I'll check it. But we've got enough there to make the box as well, but that will be later on. So let's get on with this table. I'm going to put this stuff in the bandsaw. Here's the pieces, it's correct size now. Now uh, that's just the rough cut piece, it's just come off the bandsaw. So it's going to literally, it's going to go there. So. Uh, just above the washers and then be bolted in and that's why we needed to expose the framework at the back so we can get to uh, bolt it in properly it might actually come in about there but yeah so uh, that's the raw piece this piece I've just spent a few minutes uh, filing and can you see that yeah you should be able to and rounding the edges off just so that it uh, will pivot when, we, when I drill it. I'll put it on the pedestal drill and I'll actually go straight through in one go, so like line boring it but with a pedestal drill. If I'm shouting guys I've got earplugs in, I'm sorry. The, uh, but yeah, so that'll do 
with the table on. So I'll just go and uh, file the other one up and uh, we can start drilling these out <coughs> as I'm choking to death. There we go. So uh, they're coming out really nicely. Look what just arrived. The fridge. Let's turn into an unboxing video. And I want to say a big thanks to uh, Leisure Depot for getting this out to us really quickly. We only ordered this on like, Friday? I want to say Friday. It's only taken a couple of days to get here anyway, so... The whole cause of having to refit the truck. God, that's tiny compared to the other fridge. Wow. Oh, that's smart as well. Look how narrow that is. This was our original issue with the other fridge. It was a lot wider than this. What do we get with it? You get the, you get an insulating, it's a dual zone fridge as well. You get a, a really nice bag. These bags are really useful for insulating your fridge as well. So if you get in a fridge, make sure it comes with one of those. Mains power supply, 12 volt power supply, I guess mains power adapter, all standard stuff. Awesome. Now we've got the measurement to put the interior back in while I'm making the brackets. Cool. New shit. <laughs> right, on with the other bits. long day. Uh, it's probably, hang on, yeah it's half past eight <laughs> at night and uh, Karen's decided to abandon me. So uh, I've got these as you saw earlier but these are now all machined, drilled, so basically line drilled and went straight the way through so everything lines up. That's me upright from my table. This one I've just put on uh, and it's actually fastened to the body. It's on, you know, completely. So uh, hopefully it's right. So we've got, and there you go. Look at that. So once the other one's on, we've got the table. We've got a nice table across here. I am considering lowering the truck. I'm considering taking two inches out of the suspension so it'll be down here. Um, me and Karen had a long talk about it today. I said it might be a good idea to lower the suspension, but that's a different video. So yeah, we're definitely getting there because we've got you know one in, the other one's ready to go in, and I'm really hoping that they're nice and straight. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm calling it a day. I'll see you tomorrow. Now I've got that other bracket on, it's time to put this one on. Now, uh, I'd say this was the point of no return if I was drilling holes in the truck, but as I've already done one, we're way past that. This is just into the skin because it's quite weird. There's a void behind this piece of panel. If you, This row of rivets here is into the inside of the vehicle. There's a reinforcing bar there. This is just onto the outer tub because it's still got the original Land Rover body tub. And this is just a void. The, cap, the, the, the tub cappings and the, the curve of the body is behind this. It was ever so weird when we took it apart originally. It's like, oh, it's just the body tubs behind there. It's like, oh, okay. So there's a big void behind here. So I, I'm having to put a riv nut at the bottom. Not ideal, but that's why I'm putting two at the top further up. Uh, so there's going to be one about, yeah, about there and one about there. They're bolted onto a spreader plate that goes on the inside. So this one is just basically being used for alignment. Um, I'm using good quality riv nuts, so they're as strong as I can make them. So uh, let's uh, find some riv nuts. Yeah, these are the riv nuts I'm using. They're not ordinary round ones, they're the octagonal ones. Um, if you look in the back cross member on a Land Rover where the um, mud flaps go, there's octagonal holes and these are the riv nuts that go in. They're the octagonal ones. So basically they're a nut shape. Uh, I need a much bigger hole than that. It's a ridiculously big hole. I think it's 11 mil. It's 11 mil. And I've got a really good drill bit that's 11 mil. Okay. I dropped it and bent it and it's the only one I've got so I'm having to use it. Which is quite funny because it almost cuts an octagonal hole. Yeah, that'll do it and that'll go in. Right, riv nutter. The world's biggest riv nut gun. Still suffering with a bad shoulder. Can't push on that properly. I've knackered my rotator cuff in my shoulder, so uh, I can't put any pressure on that. There we go, one rivet nut in. So we can uh, use that for alignment now. Hopefully it's in the right place. get that straight. Take measure. I don't know about straight, but they are equal distances apart, so when it folds down, it should all fit. So let's put a square on that. It's actually moved over slightly more than I wanted it to, but it's, it is where it is. Well, to the bottom edge of the body, that is absolutely dead square. So, you, know, you can see that I'm using this bottom edge as my square to square everything off because I know um, this door pillar, hang on, and I know this, this door pillar here isn't square because I can do that and tell you it isn't square. 
Um, it's equally unsquare on both sides, so does that mean it's square? I don't know, but it is what it is. It's uh, kind of hard to find something. And it looks visually square, so I guess we'll have to go off looks. I'd say if anything that one was out but that far one was out by about half a millimeter. It's not easy squaring something up on a vehicle. Especially when the vehicle isn't cut. That is absolutely dead on at that. You know what? It's going there. So and the gap's just about the right size. Sorry I keep walking out of shot guys, but uh, I'll pan back for you, there you go. <laughs> and yeah, uh, right, I've just got, the next bit's just a, two nuts and bolts to a spreader plate on the back, so I'll do them and we can actually put the interior back in once that's on. Oh, I hope it works, if not I've buggered the truck. Right, I've got that last bracket on the, on the truck. And it's gone on pretty well. There's a bit of a gap at the bottom, but I think I can cure that. Well, I know I can cure that. Um, but now me and Karen are going to get this sheet of checker plate cut. Uh, I've got to get some measurements off the truck and uh, we're just going to put it in the guillotine. We've got a floor mounted guillotine, so we're going to put it through that rather than sitting there with a grinder. It's a pain in the arse to cut aluminium as otherwise. So uh, yeah, get some measurements, do some cutting. Trusty guillotine. Best thing Karen ever bought. Yes. <laughs> it's covered in it's Springer, a Springer footprints now. Oh, well, he's a Springer. Yeah, he's a. He's a. Okay. He's a dick. <laughs> oh, look at me. Don't have a go at me. Get off! Really, okay. Two ends. <laughs> Sold that Eddie, well. Ah. Don't, you might, don't ever work with dogs or children. Do you want to put them in while we're doing this? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, but I can't get to, <laughs> can't get to the handle. Carefully. No, I'll get to it. I just... Do you want to lift anything up? I need to come and hold this. So it's flat, you know. Yeah. Can you push that corner? Because otherwise it's not going to cut straight. No, other way. No, too far. <laughs> no. No, the other way. Keep going, keep going. A bit more on that corner this way. That's it. And then back a bit because the blade isn't straight now. That's it. There. I want it on the line, don't I? Not through the line. Oh, 
this is going to be a pig to start. Once I get it going, it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that corner again. What, towards you? Yeah, this way. Go on, go on. I'll try it there. Yeah. Timmy. It's cold or something cold. Because you're not lifting yourself. Right, push that corner again. That's it. There you go. towards you a touch. Sit. Right. You're going to have to get your foot on it and kick it. Just that kick way. the air. Because I can't drag it. Sit. Right, that corner's way off now. You. Yeah, again. Every time it drags, it wants to twist. That's it. Yeah. Right, I can probably come around that side now. You want me to be? Uh, Yeah, we haven't ruined it. <laughs> Don't drink it. Does that look straight? No. Pull that corner towards me. Towards you. Yeah. No, I think we're good. That's actually pretty good as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's not a bad shear. Look at guys. lucky. Worth its weight in gold, that shear is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I know that twice, uh, twice if not three times what you paid for it now. Yeah. Because of the cost of everything's gone up. Oh, it might have been 112. It was, it was around about 100 quid each. Yeah. But the amount of metal it saved us is unreal. There you go. It's not quite right. Um, this was actually slightly too long for the metal bender and it's creased this corner. But nothing that I can't just put a, a dolly on it and a rubber hammer or knock it out. And I've got to just check them all for square. They're not, this one's a bit, we overbent this one. It's, it's got to come back a little bit. So I may just put it in the bender and just pull it back. But it's pretty good. It's not, it's not horrendous. It's, uh, it's going to be very bright, I think I'm going to have to spray it black. But uh, yeah, I've had enough. I can't even talk yet guys, I'm starving. So uh, I'm going to leave this till the morning. But uh, yeah, we'll get this sorted in the morning. Now oh, that is bent, right, okay. Hopefully this morning I can string words together, which if you see the end of the video you probably find that I can't. Now uh, I've taken the uprights off. Do you call them uprights? Yeah, the, the bottom of the table. So yeah, uprights. Uh, and centred them for the table because we've got to get fitting the table bed exactly right because if it's wrong it'll push on the hinges and make them bind up. So I've put the tables 40, 44 in the center. So I've taken off that 22 and centered it where this is going to go on the uh, upright. And I'm just drilling them now. So we're going to mark one, bolt it on, clip it to the side of the truck, 
and uh, then mark where the other one is and then drill it and bolt it on. I think that's the only way I'm going to be able to do it. So uh, hopefully that works. So I'm just drilling them now and uh, we'll get them on and see if this works. Right, so I've got, my two, I've got my two centre holes, I'm going to bolt the left one onto the table and then we'll get the other one marked. Uh, it'll make sense once I show you what we're actually doing. The first look at the table, there you go, that's what we were building all along. Now, we sort of clamped it on here and we've put a bolt through there and we're trying to get it aligned so that the hinges don't bind up. Uh, it's really difficult because the, the hinges are free floating at the moment. What I should have done was put a bolt either side and fix them. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to work. Let's have a, a proper look. It's going to be a big table, that is. So I'm going to drill a hole in this side now. There. And uh, we should be able to see if it actually fits. I've still got my doubts whether it will fit, but uh, we'll see. Moment of truth, will it actually fit? Yes. It's tight. It's tight on that hinge. You're in front of the camera. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> they can all they can see is your arse. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and we, we can We'll pivot on that single bolt at the moment, so. So to take it down. It actually works. So I need to drill there. That'll, that'll align everything. We need to come in from that bolt an equal distance. So that one and that one will align everything and then that one's got to have the strap, strap uh, to a point where it's not going to interfere. I don't know whether or not to, glue, to undo it and glue it on as well. Put some glue behind it. Shouldn't make a lot of difference. No, I wouldn't think so. Not if we ever want to take it off for some reason. No. Or it gets ripped off. Oh, there's confidence if it ever gets ripped off. Okay, drill that one. Drill that one. There you go, guys. Max track table. Big Max track table, actually. That is a big table. And just go through the dimensions with you. The. Uh, The overall width is 440 with 50 mil returns. Uh, there's a reason for the 50 mil returns is, yeah, that's close. 
Oh, there's a finger width, I can get my finger under it, it's close enough. There is going straps on this as well. The max tracks are clear. So, the, I say 440, max tracks are 350, so the max tracks are set sort of here in the centre and give us a bit of room either side. But what I'm thinking of doing is putting a strap, not a strap, a, a, a brace, a hinged brace here that we can padlock. So that's why these are 50 mil. So the max tracks will sit about 50 mil, but we can put a hinge here with a locking brace in the middle, so that'll come over and have a pad have a padlock through it, so that it secures the straps, save having to have um, like uh, bike chains and stuff to uh, lock them on with. Then there'll be a bolt, 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 where captive bolt with wing nuts to hold them in place. But I'm probably going to make a hinge that goes here, get a stainless hinge. Uh, which just locks out with a padlock through it there, so that that keeps them in place. The, um, it's the only real way I think it, I can think of doing it. But uh, it's more important we've got a table. So far. Now looking at it, nothing actually looks like it's actually changed, because uh, it hasn't. Uh, these are the original cabinets that we took out, all we've done is shortened them. Uh, we gained 80 mil by putting the new fridge in. So these, all I've done is taken wood off the back and pushed them all back. We lose, we've lost a little storage area here that we had, but we've gained more floor space and more beds, so it's, you know, swings and roundabouts. So yeah, uh, we've just got to decide what we're putting on the top of the cabinet now. But uh, everything we took out went straight back in, uh, so that was good. The, uh, even the top there I destroyed, hang on, let me show you. I know it's a bit dark, but we are in the truck. But yeah, the, uh, the top I actually just filled and sanded. But we're not decided, we haven't decided yet what's going back on there. We had a look at copper sheet and it's way too expensive. So um, we're actually thinking we're going to just cover it in stickers and then put perspex over the top. Of um, just make it so it's removable. So everywhere we go, we're going to put the stickers on there. So we're just going to have a um, you know, just fasten down in each corner. The oven's got to go back in, but I'll have to contact Neil at Forby to get a new oven because obviously the other one's gone back into Heimdall. And there's a new fridge that we got that's ready to go in. Awesome, awesome little fridge. So uh, yeah, so everything's back in here. The beauty of making everything so we could actually remove it. Right, let's get on with this table. Well, the heavens have just opened outside, so perfect time to have breakfast. Uh, might as well christen the new table. Does it hold beer? It holds beer! Hey! Oh, that beer's warm. That's horrible. Again, it's probably not that nice anyway, but I'm still going to drink it. So uh, now I've had to bring the truck in, uh, I've got to drill two more bolt holes. I'm going to put one in this corner at the top, and I've got to put one somewhere here for the, to hold, where's the pieces? The watsits for the straps, for the, what would you call those? Brackets? Strap holders? Whatever. Them. So uh, yeah, that's once I've drilled them, put that in, measured the straps. Uh, I can take this apart, run the disc, uh, run the grinder over it, uh, run a flap disc over the edges. So we've got a couple of sharp edges, round everything off. This piece is getting painted black. Uh, likewise is that one. So I'm going to cut this off, this excess mastic where it's come through, cut that off, paint these black. And then I'm going to go down it with a new, a new band of black mastic because if you, I don't know if you can actually see on camera, but there's a gap here. Now, uh, the gap doesn't really, you know, it isn't any sort of issue, but aesthetically it's not very pleasing. So run a band of mastic round so it'll be up both sides, across the top, not across the bottom, because if you run it across the bottom, any water that 
ever got in there you'd be sealing it in so leave the bottom bit open as a drain and uh, that is pretty much this table done uh, I've got to order some max tracks to go on make the little bracket but for now I'm going to drill some holes and drink some beer yep still warm drill we've got a few different marks it's, we've decided it's the middle one I move my beer, otherwise we could have tears from spilt beer. Should have centre punched it. Yep, should have definitely centre punched it. Should have got a sharper drill bit as well. <laughs> Mint! And these are just some of the cheapest uh, straps we could get from being here. Obviously. And obviously we'll just cut these down to length once uh, everything is in place. Like I was just saying, this uh, every, everything we do now is just a test fit. It's all going to come apart, be painted, go back together. That worked perfectly. Now, ignore the excess strap. that hitting oh it was just there we go now what we're going to do is cure that and like I said earlier that's just going to be two single bolts yeah that works and that's maybe just shorten that touch I'll get I'll get a square on it actually which I've just put away Yep, that's going back just a touch. That's where I spilled my beer, isn't it? God, who knew this would be so complicated to do? Perfect. Yeah. And that's sitting on the straps, not on the hinges. Top tip of the day. When you're cutting these straps, if you cut them with a knife or anything, they just fray. The easiest way to cut them, piece of scrap aluminium, piece of scrap steel, screwdriver, anything you can heat up. Don't cut through the bit you want. And it won't fray now. <laughs> and yeah, perfect. And that gives us a bit of adjustment if we ever need to adjust the table. 
and gets rid of any of the excess and I think we can probably lose that label at the same time. Oh, it's cooled down. Give that 10 minutes. Just give that a couple of minutes with the infrared lamps just to dry them off uh, and they'll be ready for the top coat. There you go. They've had a couple of coats of black on them. Well, more than a couple. Now like what I was saying earlier uh, when we were outside, is see where I've cut the mastic off. Let me get right into that. See where I've cut that mastic off. What we do is, once this is dry, actually once it arrives, because I haven't got any at the moment, is to, to run some black sealant down each side to hide that. And they'll look uh, absolutely spot on. So right, I'm going to leave that for a good, well, at least a good couple of hours to go off. I might even put the heat lamps back on it, just to send them off a bit quicker, and then we can get the table reassembled. And probably scratch all the paint off. I might just leave it overnight actually. It's been about three days since I've worked on this, so some things have turned up. The silicon turned up, well the PU adhesive. Uh, so I've done down these seams, so this is all nicely seamed in now, so that looks really good. And best of all, hang on, let me put that back up because it's in my way. Let's get a bigger workshop. Some new traction boards. These are terra firma. I think they're rated for three and a half tons. They're flexible three and a half ton terra firma boards. These are exactly the same ones I've got on my other truck and they've worked really well. The times I've used them I've had no issue. I've used them for leveling the truck. I've... The only thing is I've pulled all the lugs off here where the tyres have bitten in. These snap the lugs off. But yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think what the part number is. I think it's TF, oh I'm going to it's actually written on, TF999. So, uh, terra firma traction boards. Which is quite ironic that the, the part number's 999. Did I say 999? Yeah, 99, because they were £99 and £99. So it seems to have a lot of nines in it. But there you go. God, they're heavy. And they're going to go just there. How's that look? That looks mint. Yeah. Right. For now, what I'm going to do is use four bolts to locate it into place uh, and fasten them on. So I've got four holes to drill. It might be easier to take that off, actually. Yeah, take it off. Right. This should be pretty straightforward. I find the centre, which, if that's the centre of the board, and that's my centre bolt, which was equal on this, that should be the centre. That was easy. Can't be that easy. Nothing's ever that easy. Uh, so all I need to drill four M8 holes. I'll measure that that's actually right. Um, so I want the weight sort of in the centre, I want it squared up, so just measure this gap here, this looks about 50 mil. I've got a tape measure somewhere, 
Well, I said it looked like 50 mil. That's exactly 50 mil. And 60 from the top. So this isn't quite central. It's uh, yeah, 60 from the top, more or less. 50 from the bottom. Uh, where do I want most of the weight? Towards the hinge, so we'll keep it at 50. I'll just find something that puts 50 mil to put that on. What's that? No, oh, that's 60. Ah, oh, that's tapered, that's right. Okay, well, I'll find something a bit narrow. something else it's not quite, it's it's just a little it's something just a little bit bigger it's like every scrap piece of wood I've got in the workshop isn't it this is that nearly 60. There must be something. Perfect. 50 mil exactly. Yep, 60 or thereabouts. Yeah, 60 thereabouts. Right, all I could do, four holes, and then this is pretty much done. About equal from there. It's Bob on. Right, draw some holes. Let's do an easy one to start with. When you're drilling checker plate, is there always like a piece of, you know, the actual tread plate actually in the way? That was the only one that was smooth. I'll have to centre punch the rest of them. We'll put bolts in those ones. We use them for alignment. Put a washer on the back. I think what I'm going to have to do in the future is change all these um, 
nuts and bolts and stuff for stainless because it is it is definitely going to rust. It's just I hadn't got stainless in stock, so. enough. So you get the idea, there's going to be four of them, I'll do the rest off camera because it's they're a bit long and boring to do. So uh, I'll crack on with that and we're back in a minute. Moment of truth guys, does it fit? <laughs> yes it does. All I've got to do is cure that. I've got to rattle on that. This one, dead tight. This one rattles. But yeah, how cool does that look? Love it. Oh yeah, really pleased with that. That looks the business. Right, all I've got to do now is make something that goes across there that I can lock so these are secure and stop that rattle because that's going to drive me mental. But the, um, that's going to be in another video. When we build the box on the other side, I'll make the, the locking bracket for this. So uh, I think this video is probably going to be over an hour long. So uh, I think I'll wrap it up there. If you've enjoyed it, guys, make sure you give me that thumbs up. If you've really enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Well, hopefully I can actually string words today. Nope, can't.